Magic Tree House, Book Three, Mummies in the Morning, Chapter Six, The Writing on the Wall. Jack and Annie squinted at the pyramid wall. A series of tiny pictures were carved into the stone. There are four pictures here, Jack told the Ghost Queen. Describe them to me, Jack, one at a time, please, she said. Jack studied the first picture. Okay, he said. The first one is like this. He made a zigzag in the air with his finger. Like stairs? asked the Ghost Queen. Yes, stairs, said Jack. Just like stairs, she nodded. Easy enough. Jack studied the second picture. The second one has a long box on the bottom, he said. He drew it in the air. The ghost queen looked puzzled. With three things on top, like this, said Annie. She drew squiggly lines in the air. The ghost queen still seemed puzzled. Like a hat, said Jack. Hat, said the ghost queen. No, more like a boat, said Annie. Boat, said the ghost queen. She got excited. Boat. Jack took another look at the wall. Yes, it could be a boat, he said. The ghost queen looked very happy. She smiled. Yes, of course, she said. Jack and Annie studied the next picture. The third one is like a thing that holds flowers, said Annie. Or a thing that holds water, said Jack. Like a jug? asked the ghost queen. Exactly, said Jack. Yes, a jug, said Annie. Jack and Annie studied the last picture. And the last one looks like a pole that droops, said Annie. Like a curved stick, said Jack. But one side is shorter than the other. The ghost queen looked puzzled. Wait, said Jack. I'll draw it in my notebook, big, so you can see it. Jack put down the scepter and got out his pencil. He drew the hieroglyph. A folded cloth, said the ghost queen. Well, not really, said Jack. He studied his drawing. But that is the hieroglyph for a folded cloth, said the ghost queen. Well, okay, said Jack. He looked at the fourth hieroglyph again. He still couldn't see the folded cloth. Alas, it was like a towel hanging over a bathroom road. So that's all of them, said Annie. She pointed at each picture. Stairs, boat, jog. For the cloth, Jack wrote the words in his notebook. So what does the message mean? He asked the ghost queen. Come, she said. She held out her hand. Come to my burial chambers. And she floated away. Chapter 7. The Scroll Jack put the scepter and his notebook and pencil into his pack. He and Annie followed the ghost queen deeper into the pyramid until they came to some stairs. The stairs, said Jack and Annie. The ghost queen floated up the stairs. Jack and Annie followed. The ghost queen floated right through a wooden door. Jack and Annie pushed on the door. It opened slowly. They stepped into a cold, drafty room. The ghost queen was nowhere in sight. Dim torchlight lit the huge room. It had a very high ceiling. On one side was a pile of tables, chairs, and musical instruments. On the other side of the room was a small wooden boat. The boat, said Jack. What's it doing inside Queen Hotepi's pyramid? asked Annie. Maybe it's supposed to carry her to the next life, said Jack. 
He and Annie went over to the boat. They looked inside it. The boat was filled with many things. Gold plates, painted cups, jeweled goblets, wooden baskets, jewelry with blue stones, small wooden statues. Look, said Jack. He reached into the boat and lifted out a clay jug. The jug, said Annie. Jack looked inside the jug. Something's in here, he said. What is it? asked Annie. Jack fell down inside the jug. It feels like a big napkin, he said. The folded cloth, said Annie. Jack reached into the jug and pulled out the folded cloth. It was wrapped around an ancient looking scroll. Jack slowly unrolled the scroll. It was covered with wonderful hieroglyphs. The Book of the Dead, whispered Annie. We found it. We found her book. Oh, man. Jack traced his finger over the scroll. It felt like very old paper. Queen Utapi, called Annie. We have it. We found your book of the dead. Silence. Queen Hutapi. Then another door on the other side of the chamber creaked open. In there, said Annie. Maybe she's in there. Jack's heart was pounding. Cold air was coming through the open doorway. Come on, said Annie. Wait. No, said Annie. She's waited a thousand years for her book. Don't make her wait anymore. Jack put the ancient scroll into his backpack. Then he and Annie slowly started to cross the drafty room. They came to the open door. Annie went through first. Hurry, Jack, she said. Jack stepped into the other room. It was nearly bare, except for a long gold box. The box was open. The cover was on the floor. Queen Hutapi called Annie. Silence. We found it, said Annie. Your book of the dead. There was still no sign of the ghost queen. The gold box glowed. Jack could barely breath. Let's leave the scroll on the floor and go, he said. No. I think we should leave it in there, said Annie. She pointed to the gold box. No, said Jack. Don't be afraid, said Annie. Come on. Annie took Jack by the arm. They walked together across the room to the glowing gold box. They stopped in front of the box and they peered inside. Chapter 8. The Mummy A real mummy? The bandages were still wrapped around the bald skull, but most of the bandages had come off the face. It was Hutapi, Queen of the Nile. Her broken teeth were showing, her little wrinkled ears, her squashed nose, her withered flesh, her hollow eye sockets. Plus, the rotting bandages on her body were coming off. You could see bones. Oh, gross, cried Annie. Let's go. No, said Jack. It's interesting. Forget it, said Annie. She started out of the room. Wait, Annie. Come on, Jack. Hurry, cried Annie. She was standing by the door. Jack pulled out the Egypt book and flipped to a picture of a mummy. He read around. Ancient Egyptians tried to protect the body so it would last forever. First, it was dried out with salt. Ah, oh, stop, said Eddie. Listen, said Jack. He kept reading. Next, it was covered with oil. 
Then it was wrapped tightly in bandages. The brain was removed by. Yuck! Stop! Cried Annie. Goodbye. She dashed out of the room. Annie called Jack. We have to give her the book of the dead. But Annie was gone. Jack reached into his pack. He pulled out the scroll and the scepter. He put them next to the mummy's skull. Was it just his imagination, or did a deep sigh seem to shudder throughout the room? Did the mummy's face grow calmer? Jack held his breath as he backed away, out of the mummy room, out of the boat room, down the stairs. At the bottom of the stairs, he heaved his own sigh, a sigh of relief. He looked down the hallway. It was empty. Hey, where are you? He said. No answer. Where in the world was Annie? Jack started down the hallway. Annie! He called. Has she run out of the pyramid? Was she already outside? Annie! Help, Jack! Came a cry. The voice sounded far away. It was Annie. Where was she? Help, Jack! Annie! Jack started to run along the shadowy hallway. Help, Jack! Her cry seemed fainter. Jack stopped. He was running away from her voice. Annie! He called. He went back toward the burial chambers. Jack! There. Her voice was louder, Jack, even louder. Jack climbed the stairs. He went back into the boat room. He looked around the room, at the furniture, the musical instruments, the boat. Then he saw it, another door, right next to the door he had just come through. The other door was open. Jack dashed through it. He found himself at the top of some stairs. There were just like the stairs in the other hallway. He went down into the hallway. It was lit by torches on the wall. It was just like the other hallway. Annie, he called. Jack, Annie, Jack. She was running through the hallway toward him. She crashed into him. I was lost, she cried. I think this is one of those false passages built to fool the tomb robbers, said Jack. A false passage, said Annie, panting. Yeah, it looks just like the right hallway, said Jack. We have to go back into the boat room. And out the right door. Just then, they heard a creaking noise. Jack and Annie turned around. They looked up the stairs. Then they watched in horror as the door slowly creaked shut. A deep sound rumbled in the distance, and all the torches went out. Chapter Nine. Follow the leader. It was pitch dark. What happened? Asked Annie. I don't know. Something weird, said Jack. We have to get out of here fast. Push against the door. Good idea, said Annie in a small voice. They felt their way through the darkness, to the top of the stairs. Don't worry. Everything's gonna be okay, said Jack. He was trying to stay calm. Of course," said Annie. They leaned against the wooden door and pushed. It wouldn't budge. They pushed harder. No use. Jack took a deep breath. It was getting harder to breathe, and harder to stay calm. What can we do? Asked Annie. Just, just rest a moment," said Jack, panting. 
His heart was pounding as he tried to see through the darkness. Maybe we should start down the hall, he said. Maybe we'll eventually come to, to an exit. He wasn't sure about it, but they had no choice. Come on, he said. Feel the wall. Jack felt the stone wall as he climbed slowly down the stairs. Annie followed. Jack started down the dark hallway. It was impossible to see anything, but he kept going, taking one step at a time, moving his hands along the wall. He went around the corner. He went around another corner. He came to some stairs. He went up. There was a door. He pushed against it. And he pushed too. This door wouldn't budge either. Was this the same door they had started at? It was no use. They were trapped. And he took his hand in the dark. She squeezed it. They stood together at the top of the stairs, listening to the silence. Meow! Oh, man, Jack whispered. He's back, said Annie. Meow! Follow him, cried Jack. He's going away from us. They started down the dark hallway, following the cat's meow. Hands against the wall. Jack and Annie stumbled through the darkness. Meow! They followed the sound, all the way through the winding hallway. Down, down, down. Around one corner, then another, and another. Finally, they saw light at the end of the tunnel. They rushed forward, out into the bright sunlight. Yay! Annie shouted, but Jack was thinking. Annie, he said, how do we get out of the false passage? The cat, said Annie. But how could the cat do it? asked Jack. Magic, said Annie. Jack frowned. But look, said Annie. She pointed. The cat was bounding away. Over the sand. Thank you, called Annie. Thanks, Jack shouted at the cat. His black tail waved. Then he disappeared in the shimmering waves of heat. Jack looked toward the palm trees. At the top of one sat the tree house, like a bird's nest. Time to go home, Jack said. He and Annie set up for the palm trees. It was a long, hot walk back. At last, Annie grabbed onto the rope ladder. Then Jack. Once they were inside the tree house, Jack reached for the book about Pennsylvania. Just then, he heard a rumbling sound. The same sound they had heard in the pyramid. Look, Annie said. Pointing out the window, Jack looked. A boat was beside the pyramid. It was gliding over the sand, like a boat sailing over the sea. Then it faded away into the distance. Was it just a mirage? Or was the ghost queen finally on her way to the next life? Home, Jack, whispered Annie. Jack opened the Pennsylvania book. He pointed to the picture of Frog Creek. I wish we could go home, he said. The wind began to blow. The leaves began to shake. The wind blew harder. It whistled louder. The tree house started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely silent. Chapter 10. Another Clue Late morning sunlight shone through the treehouse window. Shadows danced on the walls and ceiling. Jack took a deep breath. He 
It was lying on the floor of the treehouse. I wonder what mom's making for lunch, said Annie. She was looking out the window. Jack smiled. Lunch. Mom. Home. It all sounded so real, so calm and safe. I hope it's peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, he said. He closed his eyes. The wood floor felt cool. Boy, this place is a mess, said Annie. We'd better make it neater in case M comes back. Jack had almost forgotten about M. Would they ever meet the mysterious M? The person who seemed to own all the books in the treehouse? Let's put the Egypt book on the bottom of the pile, said Annie. Good idea, said Jack. He needed a rest before he visited any more ancient tombs. Let's put the dinosaur book on top of the Egypt book, said Annie. Yeah, good, said Jack. And a long rest before he visited another Tyrannosaurus Rex. The castle book can go on the very top of the pile, said Annie. Jack nodded and smiled. He liked thinking about the night on the cover of the castle book. He felt as if the night were his friend. Jack, said Annie, look. Jack opened his eyes. She was pointing at the wooden floor. What is it? he asked. You have to see for yourself. Jack groaned as he got up. He stood next to Annie and looked at the floor. He didn't see anything. Turn your head a little, said Annie. You have to catch the light just right. Jack tipped his head to one side. Something was shining on the floor. He tipped his head a bit more. A letter came into focus. The letter M is shimmered in the sunlight. This proved the treehouse belonged to M. Absolutely for sure. No question. No doubt about it. Jack touched the M with his finger. His skin tingled. Just then, the leaves trembled. The wind picked up. Let's go down now, he said. Jack grabbed his backpack. Then he and Annie climbed down the ladder. As they stood on the ground below the tree house, Jack heard a sound in the bushes. Who's there? he called. The woods grew still. I'm going to bring the medallion back soon, Jack said loudly. And the bookmark too, both of them, tomorrow. Who are you talking to? asked Annie. I feel like Am is nearby, Jack whispered. Annie's eyes grew white. Should we look for him? But just then, their mother's voice came from the distance. Jack! Annie! Jack and Annie looked around at the trees. Then they looked at each other. Tomorrow, they sat together. And they took off, running out of the woods. They ran down their street. They ran across their yard. They ran into their house. They ran into their kitchen. They ran right into their mom. She was making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches.